Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Badil and my presentation today is based on the film A Clockwork Orange which was released on December 19th, 1971 by the director named Stanley Kubrick. The Clockwork Orange takes place in the 1920s in Manchester, England. This film adapts the fundamental factors of a punk movement style, adapting the ideologies of dancing, fashion, art, etc. There are also a ton of a mixture in American, Russian, and English slang throughout the film where it adapts a few portions of Shakespeare's phrases and wording by the protagonist Alex in this film. The punk movement is the style that A Clockwork Orange adapted in the 1970s when it was first produced. This type of movement involved the use of fashion, visual arts, dance, and being non-conformity. All these factors are seen throughout the film as the characters are involved expressing the behavior amongst this period. Fashion and art is the first thing depicted when this film first started. As the main characters were suspenders, cod pieces, eyelashes, and leather boots to show off they are part of a gang called the Drugs, as you can see on the bottom left hand of the screen. As for visual art, there were lots of statues, paintings, sexually based on women and male. The movement carried the factor of being authoritarianism, which is expressed as rejecting the power of law, where within the film, the gangs called the Drugs go on a rampage running from police, starting fights, and hurting innocent people not caring about anything except their own happiness of doing this. Stanley Kubrick is known to be one of the best filmmakers in cinematic history. His style of adapting new forms of movie techniques revolutionized the filmmaking industry. In his production of A Clockwork Orange, he introduced two new filmmaking techniques, one being the Ludovico technique, and implementing an oppressive mood technique. Stanley implemented the oppressive mood technique in order to allow his audience to create and imagine the feelings the actors go through throughout the film. He believed that his viewers could imagine what could occur on their own term of what the protagonist wanted to do based off his actions, personalities, and paintings. The theory of adapting the Ludovico technique changed the mindset of many viewers watching the film, including myself. This technique consisted of presenting a subject to a receive negative enforcement instead of positive. This was illustrated by Alex when he agreed to do this treatment with the government for his freedom, as is depicted on the right hand of the screen. This technique illustrated how the audience can oppose their belief in the film, where Stanley provided two sides, either the protection of society or the protection of human nature. When you think of becoming a director, you think you use the best technology in order to produce the best movie. Well, in this case, Stanley did the opposite. Stanley went back in time and used old techniques in order to produce this movie. Stanley visualized this film to be more of a cinematic importance than anything else. He wanted the audience to feel as they were right next to the character when everything was occurring. Stanley went back to the use of a handheld camera instead of the use of a camera on a dolly which was advanced technology at the time. Stanley believed when you are involved with the actor in front of you, you are able to have a better mindset on how you want the scenes to go. In this case, Stanley was the one behind the camera the entire film. This camera work technique is not only allow for a better establishment subjectivity but could also improve the intensity chaos and intimacy between characters giving off their point of view zooming in and out from high points to low points getting the best feeling of what is happening to the audience there were many mind-blowing and extraordinary scenes throughout the film when i first watched it for myself but the one thing that I think was most important was when Alex demonstrated the results of the treatment that the government did to him upon his approval. I thought that this was a turning point within this film because the government's goal was to change the mindset of criminals and their doings. If the authorities can do that, then there will be less crimes committed outside in the public and less people in jail. When Alex demonstrated the struggles he was experiencing for doing the things he liked to do, it didn't seem human-like more as he, if he was a puppet than a human. I say this because his freedom of doing what he likes to do was taken away from him and was replaced with suffering that he had to experience for all his life. This 
felt as to be the most predominant scene because the audience is able to see Alex freedom being taken away from him. And what is the point of being out in public if you cannot do the things you like to do? This is where Stanley's oppressive technique comes into play because now we must figure out what is best, keeping crime off the street or keeping the fundamental factors of being human in this world. While criminals do deserve the consequences for the doings of crimes, I believe that taking away their human nature is too far. I disagree with the government within this film on how they intervene and change the mental health of Alex and his doings. There are many ways to correct the human behavior, but changing their lifestyle from not being themselves is a hard position to stand for. And I think that this idea is where Stanley Kubrick shined the most, having people debate the right from the wrong. What comes first, the protection of society or the protection of human nature? While many people have different opinions on which they stand for, I can say for myself that I stand for the protection of human nature. I say this because what is society if society isn't themselves? If people didn't do the things they like to do, they would be upset, unhappy with themselves. While I know the consequences that Alex did is bad, he should not be brainwashed for what he did. In my opinion, I feel like someone as Alex should remain in jail until help could change the way they think allowing these people to go back on the streets doing the things they like to do is bad for society but it's also hard to take away from them and i feel like staying in jail could be the best bet in order to keep society safe and for they could keep their thinking of what they like to do these are my citations for this project i thank you guys for watching this has been jonathan OL92 film.